Hey, pirate cat. Hi. Oh my goodness. Where are you headed? Today, I'm going to introduce you to Pirate Cat, this cute little orange and white fella right here. He has a pretty unique story, and he's something of a local celebrity here. He even has a Facebook page with nearly 5,000 followers, and apparently he's been rated 4.9 out of 5 stars as well. But in order to understand this kitty cat's fame, we have to take a step back for context. A long time ago, there used to be a path for trains called the Monon Railroad that connected Indianapolis to Chicago. In 1987, the company that owned the railroad was sold, and as train travel continued to decline in popularity, the railroad was largely abandoned. Shortly thereafter, city officials in Indianapolis and the surrounding suburbs realized that the land of the railroad could be repurposed. They decided to purchase the land and turn it into miles and miles of paved track for running, biking, and walking. After all, as a previous railroad, it already had pre-installed river crossings and was largely flat. It also was largely cleared of trees and undergrowth, making the job of creating a new path relatively easy. And since the land was owned by a single entity, the company that previously owned the railroad, it was much easier to purchase the land required. Nowadays, it's known as the Monon Trail, and it runs a continuous 27 miles from north to south. It connects the communities of Indianapolis, Carmel, Westfield, and Sheridan together. It mostly runs behind residential areas, but there's also a few commercial districts along its route, including some hip cultural neighborhoods like Broad Ripple and the Carmel Arts and Design District. According to this signpost, an estimated 120,000 pedestrians use the trail every year, in addition to about 70,000 cyclists. I'm fortunate to live close enough to the trail to make regular use of it. And this brings us back to the story of Pirate Cat. You see, along the trail are a variety of rest stops where the city has installed bathrooms, drinking fountains, and benches for bikers and walkers to take a break. And at one of these rest stops, the 96th Street Station, a traveler will often encounter a strange orange and white cat, either standing guard watching the trail, dozing off beneath one of the benches, or hunting in the nearby foliage. I've had the pleasure of running into Pirate Cat a couple of times myself, and he's always very friendly. On one of my stops, he went up to the drinking fountain in which there's a doggy bowl installed and begged me to turn on the water so he could get a drink. It was adorable, and he's a very well socialized cat. It's also clear that he's taken very good care of by the people in the community. They'll often leave out a little water bowl labeled Pirate Cat just for him. Pretty much everyone who frequents this portion of the trail knows about Pirate Cat, and some have even given him the title of Mayor of the Monon, which I just think is adorable. He also wears a GPS tracker around his collar and has a couple of tags that will direct you to his Facebook page and have a phone number that you can call for more information about the cat. So let's do some digging. Where did Pirate Cat come from and why does he frequent this portion of the Monon Trail? To the surprise of some, he's not wild. In fact, he has a good home which he returns to every night and two owners who take good care of him. His humans, Amanda Cancilla and Matt Gufreda, live in a house that's nearby. Matt found the cat one day while he was volunteering for a low-cost animal clinic. He fell in love and brought the cat home to his girlfriend Amanda and their two children. Apparently, they named him Pirate Cat because he liked to sit on their shoulders like a parrot. Aw, look at the little guy. The animal clinic informed them that the cat used to be an indoor-outdoor cat, and it quickly became apparent to the couple which of those two the cat preferred. He ransacked their furniture and continually found ways to escape the house when he was locked indoors, but he would always return. Here's a video of how antsy he gets when he gets locked indoors. This is Pirate Cat annoying his owners to let him out. How are you? Eventually, the couple decided that the cat would simply be happier if he was allowed to roam freely. So they ensured he had been neutered, attached a GPS, and let him go free. They still feed him and monitor him as he returns to their house regularly. But he also heads out to the local trails to get some lovin' from random strangers. When he was first free, he raised so much concern among passerbys that the couple had to get him his own phone number. According to Amanda, quote, He's been taken to every humane society, he's been to vets, he's been to people's houses. It really got super annoying. 
If you call the number on his tag, a voicemail will read to you, Please put the cat down. It is not in distress. It does not need you to save it. It has a lovely home, and it will return to it after its walk. Eventually, life on the road led to a trip to the animal jail. This picture shows pirate cat nabbed by the law, picked up by state police in Hamilton County. Sometime in mid-November 2017, Pirate Cat was arrested by state police. Apparently, someone walking their dog down the trail had a hard time containing their dog's excitement when they saw the cat, so the woman in question called the police. The officer placed Pirate Cat in the back of their patrol car until Amanda and Matt were available to come by and pick him up. They took him home to keep him safe, but allegedly he escaped the same night. Someone in the community found the cat wandering around shortly thereafter and took him into their house to give him a safe spot to lay low from the law. During this time, the hashtag FreePirateCat was even started by some of his overzealous fans. This raised all sorts of questions about the legality of whether or not Pirate Cat should be allowed to roam freely. You see, Pirate Cat's owners live in Marion County on the south side of the 96th Street Station. But Pirate Cat likes to hang out most often at the 96th Street rest stop, which is located in a different county entirely. And they have different laws and ordinances. Here in Marion County, on this side of 96th Street, the feral cat laws are different than they are on this side of the street in Hamilton County in Carmel. Pirate Cat's home is in Marion County, but he doesn't know when he crosses the border. His humans even went as far as to get him his own lawyer. Uh, the city of Carmel changed their ordinance. Uh, now Pirate Cat has a problem. The good news is it seems that Pirate Cat has won the day, and in 2019 when I'm recording this video, he is free to roam and pillage as he pleases. However, not all is fine and dandy on the seven seas. This past July, Pirate Cat was diagnosed with stage 3 Three kidney failure. His owners have him on a special diet and are monitoring his situation closely with regular vet visits. There's a lot of people hoping and praying for his health and safety in the coming years. He's become such a fixture in the community, the mayor of the Monon and the gatekeeper of the 96th Street Station. His owners are raising money for his medical bills and lawyer fees in two different ways. They're offering officially branded merchandise of Pirate Cat and they've set up a GoFundMe page. I'm going to leave a link down in the description to both, just in case his story has resonated with you and you want to check them out for yourself. For myself and many others, I'm hoping that he'll be around to pillage and plunder the Monon for many, many years to come. I hope that you found this video interesting. I know it's a departure from what I normally do on this channel, but I thought it was just so good and wholesome that I had to share it. If you enjoyed the video, I'd encourage you to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm also curious, if you had to give Pirate Cat a Warrior Cat's name, what would it be? Leave a comment down below with your answer. That's all I have for you today, so until next time, this is Falcon Develops, over and out.